Tyler, you and I both have been following QuantumScape, the next generation battery technology startup for a couple of years now, really since they went public. But it's been a little while since we did a video. I think the last video I did was when they reported earnings, but it's been probably six weeks or so ago. We're getting close to the end of the year. We're doing a series of videos where we're thinking about 2024 and beyond. You ready to talk about QuantumScape and maybe set some expectations for what we're looking for from QuantumScape in 2024? But yeah, let's do it. Before we get into it, though, just a reminder, this video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. If you're looking for even more great stock ideas, go to our special link. Go to fool.com forward slash unscripted. The Motley Fool is going to give you its 10 best stocks to buy right now. You're going to want to check that out after checking out the rest of this video. All right, let's get to it here, Tyler. First thing I want to show is the stock chart. It has not been a bad year for QuantumScape investors unless you happen to buy maybe late spring, late winter, early spring, or late summer in some of these peaky periods. And, and the reason this stock is so volatile is because it has no revenue. This is a entirely pre-revenue business. They're still a startup in the most pure sense of the phrase. What are they doing? And the last time we heard from QuantumScape, what did we learn? Yeah, that just also on that start chart too. Let's not pretend that any of that has to do with the actual business itself or anything that's changed fundamentally with this business. It's just more or less the ups and downs of the market and investors' attitudes towards this company more than anything else, because the story has more or less progressed the rate and the pace that, that management has been saying that they were going to do. In a in their August presentation, they said we had four main goals in 2023. The four big like things that they wanted to do was they wanted to increase uh, cathode capacity, which basically means like more power density into the actual cathode of the battery. They want to improve their cell packing efficiency. That's a, that's a blend between the science and the manufacturing because lithium batteries or just batteries in general are weird because when you actually load them up with electricity, they have a tendency to swell get a little bit bigger and you can actually lead to degradation of the kind of structural integrity if it's not designed in the right way. So these are the things that they said they were going to do. And on the manufacturing side, they've been saying, hey, we want to be more consistent. We want to be more reliable and actually just ramp up actual production of what we're doing. So far in 2023, they mostly achieved these things. Back in the second quarter this year, they had mentioned that they had delivered a test cell to its independent or its third party automotive partner, not disclosed, but it's probably Volkswagen considering their deep ties. We're, we're just speculating, but we're pretty sure it's Volkswagen. They have six OEM partners, so we're speculating it's Volkswagen, but it very well could be one of the others. But considering like Volkswagen is, has a JV with them, they're on the board of QuantumScape, just an assumption, right? So. It, this was it, basically, they had sent it to them and a, a lot of the things that they were looking for in terms of what would make it an automotive manufacturing quality battery seemed to have passed that, that test. They were able to hold 95% of discharge energy, which basically means like if you got the battery in your phone and after a year of charging it and discharging it, you've all of a sudden noticed, hey, this thing doesn't hold a charge for much long. That's degradation of the battery. And the degradation on these solid state batteries has been exemplary and probably one of the best qualities of them so far. On the manufacturing side, that's where things have been a little slower to develop. Actually building this, the separator between the cathode and anode, it's, it's this ceramic layer that's been very hard to manufacture and manufacture consistently for them. Something they've talked about a couple times so far this year. And once they get that up and running, obviously, uh, once they work out the kinks, excuse me, they want to scale up production. And that's and where- to, to be clear, they figured out the separator that they want. The challenge is manufacturing it at scale. So again, that was the no. fourth of those, of those goals. Yes. But like you were, one, you were getting ready to say, Tyler, this is, from, this is from the third quarter shareholder letter. They previously reported when they announced their second quarter that they've got the equipment installed for Raptor. So they're making some progress on that. And this was the big thing. They're saying- that they do anticipate that they will have deployed Raptor by the end of the year, which is one of the which is one of the goals that they had laid out. It's been slow and it's been fits and starts, but it does look like they're more or less on the schedule that they set, which is incredibly impressive if we're being honest. Or maybe they were too conservative with their goals and they need to be a little more aggressive and push their engineering team a little bit harder and maybe miss some of these goals because they were too aggressive. There's two ways, two different ways to look at it. 
Oh, I kind of like the consistency of expectations. If they if that's what they're telling you, yeah. they're going to no, do, that's, do that's it. True. That's that. I think that's uh, a little bit better than I don't know promising shareholders the moon and then I don't know missing a production by three years. I don't know what other companies could have possibly do something like that. And this brings us to 2024 and what our expectations are for them coming up. And it, it would appear that they're in a position now. There is something in terms of a viable product that there's like, you can see it. It, what it, a couple of years ago, it, it still seemed like a dream, but it, it actually looks like it's something of substance now. And so in 2024, right, manufacturing styles at very low volumes, they're sending them to third party. So now we're not just getting their own testing results, their own validation. They're sending to, to a third party and the third party are the partners, the companies that are going to be buying them. So, you know, they're going to be rigorous. We're starting to get that third party feedback, which is really useful. So they can start focusing on the next step up, which is continuing to refine the product, produce your next low volume manufacturing samples. That's the B samples, and then start scaling up manufacturing. Right. And that puts us at the crossroads of 2024. And we talked about this before we got started, the idea that this probably means QuantumScape is now at the point where money really starts to mean something for them. They've had quite a bit of cash. Their cash burn has been manageable, but that's because they were more or less in the R&D things and some limited capital expenditures for these small scale production things. But now we're talking about the possibility of going to large scale commercial manufacturing, and that costs a lot. Of money, the, what, the billion dollars in cash they ended the last quarter with on their balance sheet ain't gonna ain't gonna come close to cutting it. No, it, we've a lot of these battery production facilities in other places uh, of the market. Tesla Gigafactory in Vegas that was a, a multi billion dollar project, and so I, it wouldn't be unreasonable right. to expect the same thing here. And so this is where it's not on quantum scapes roadmap. This is where in 2024 I would like to see something along the lines of bringing in a big money partner, bringing in either an automotive manufacturer who's going to partner with them to actually do the manufacturing or some big private capital partner that's going to shoulder a lot of the load on the actual construction side. So a la Panasonic like with Tesla, right? With their yep. big partner. Yeah. Brookfield. Yeah, KKR, no, I think, I think like that. Companies with money, companies with manufacturing skills, Ideally, both, right? That would be the, the ultimate partner. And, and I think you're right. Where we are, again, this would, to me, this would be the biggest validation that everything we've learned so far is accurate, that these samples are truly going to be automotive grade, that they're going to be better than what's out there. And I don't think it's a stretch to say that we need them to be substantially better than the uh -huh. existing technology for these automotive manufacturers to start to make the transition over to them. And also their ability to manufacture them at cost, right? It has to be cost competitive with the existing technology. And I think the evidence that those things are true would be exactly what you're talking about. The JV partnership that they have with Volkswagen right now, start talking dollars about manufacturing of that. Who's going to pay for the manufacturing? And this is a big part of it to me is what would QuantumScape's economic benefit of those partnerships be? Number one, somebody with the capital to deploy, you want that, but they're going to want the lion's share of the profits if they're taking on all the capital risk too, right? So what is QuantumScape's IP worth? And then as an investor, we're really going to, for the first time, beyond thinking broadly about market profitability levels for batteries broadly and the total addressable market for mainly the automotive sector right now for EVs, we're finally going to start getting some numbers, Tyler, that can tell us what is a reasonable valuation for this business in terms of the kind of profits that it could generate at scale from whatever these partnerships look like for manufacturing or it's cost of capital. If they have to go take on a bunch of debt, do more secondary offerings to sell stock, to raise money, whatever the total pie looks like, we're finally going to start to be able to truly get some more tight valuation for this business about what's a reasonable price to pay for it. Yeah. And I wouldn't rule out the possibility of QuantumScape doing it on its own. Like you said, with debt and equity, I don't know if that's the best route either and the best way for shareholders to benefit necessarily because raising equity dilutes future earnings potential. So that was my kind of expectation for this. Uh, it's not going to necessarily happen, but I think you and I kind of agree that's where it should go. And 
hopefully that's a story that we can keep talking about here because like I said, they don't, they're pretty quiet about it, which is kind of nice. It means that they're focused on doing the job and not telling us about it all the time. And, you know, see if what, I'm not going to lie. I kind of thought this was a joke when I got started, but it's turning into something.